Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhakudash. <coughs> Yahweh is the Emily Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Hada, Sham, name, Yahweh Shai, being the Mumigan Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, Rakhakudash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders, the great most and never well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all, back at it again. With no less through the spirit of power, Yahweh Bashim Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right. How can you discern the face of the sky, but you, but not the times, man? Matthew 24 or Salakia. Let me open up with this one instead. Matthew 16 and 3. Actually, then we started uh, verse 1. Matthew 16 and 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, tempting, desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? All right. That's right, man. Okay. So <laughs> here it is. People, you know, be able to tell, oh, yeah, it's about to rain today. Oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be a hot, windy day. So on and so forth, right? They could pick up and discern the signs of the skies, but they can't pick up and discern the signs of the times, man, which is very hypocritical. Okay. Because you how about Shemesh is putting it right in front of their faces. And there's so many different things that's coming to pass right now, according to biblical prophecy, that the Lord told us to look out for. All right. And one of the main topics I'm going to get into through the spirit is economic collapse. All right. And also uh, re-infrastructure, re uh, if that's a proper term, but basically, you know, changing the infrastructure in the cities, man. All right. Ultimately setting it up for what? A police state. Okay. Matthew 24 and 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Right. So we see that Yahweh Shah's return is at the doors. We see Yahweh Shah's return is near. We see Eric, all hell is preparing to break loose. OK. Not saying all hell is going to break loose tomorrow. All right, Lord willing, it does. Lord willing, it breaks loose right now. But the point being, all right, we see the buildup of it, man. Just like how, you know, when you see uh, the, the, the trees go through certain seasons, you see the leaves falling off the tree, you know you're in fall. You see the trees being, you know, completely blank with, with leaves, you know you're in winter, okay? You, the trees grow back again in springtime. It's all fresh and green leading up to the summer fruits and, and whatnot, right? So, hey, it, it goes to show you that just like with the signs of the times, okay? Second Ezra 9 and 1, he answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Right. And how do we measure the time diligently? We measure it through the prophecies. The prophecies is the measuring stick. All right. To see where, where, where we are in the Lord's script. OK. And the prophecies that are, you know, in the process of being fulfilled is eco economic collapse. man, And also, uh, you know, basically the control of Esau Edom's. Uh, NWO, his one world agenda. And he's going to do it through the banking system. And what's the ultimate goal? To get everybody C-hipped. According to Nick Rockefeller, man. All right. Or was it David Rockefeller? Let's get the quote real quick.
you know, but that C-hip, as you see in the top right corner right here, this is the end goal, all right, for Esau Edom's, you know, plans, man, all right? Here it is, right here, Rockefeller. It's okay. Phone being slow. Give it a little second. Abraza, Lord willing, it'll come up. You know, but this goes to show you, you know, what's getting ready to happen. These are the signs of the times, man. <laughs> and through the Spirit, the Lord got it paused because this is really what's getting ready to happen. Okay. Of course. Yeah, they don't want to. Uh, of course, they're not going to make it easy. But yeah, I just wanted to um, fact check. I just wanted to fact check. So, Salakia. But, um... But yeah, one of the Rockefellers said the end goal is to get everybody uh, C-hipped, man. All right. And Lord willing, I'll, you know, I'll get back into that. But um, this is uh, 2 Andrews 9 and 2. Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Okay. Right. And how do we know? Because of the signs. Verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. And we're seeing all these different signs coming to pass, going to show you that we're at the end. All right, what happened? You had that earthquake in Turkey. All right, you're seeing uproars all over the world, and they're getting ready to come even more and more and more. Okay, so it says what? The most I speak of those things from those from the days that were before the even from the beginning. So it's already been written from the foundation of the earth how how everything is to to play out, man. Okay? It's just a matter of it being played out. All right. Verse five, for like as all that is made in the world have the beginning and the end, and the end is manifest. Yeah, it's manifest that we are at the end. And how is it manifest that we're at the end? Through the signs of the times. Verse six, even so. The times also the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs, man. That's it. So we're at the end, man. All right. That's why it says in the book of Habakkuk or Habakkuk, chapter two, verse three, for the vision, talking about the prophecies, is yet for an appointed time. Right. So it's all supposed to be fulfilled at an appointed set time. It says, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, man. Right. So at the end, it shall speak and not lie. And we are at the end. All right. And the vision is not lying. It's, it's being made. It's being brought to pass. Yahweh yeah, I spoke of these things from the foundation of the world, and they're coming to pass. Most high is not a man that he shall lie. All right. Um, you know, another end time prophecy right here. It's like 6 and 20. It says, and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, meaning we're at the end of this world vanishing it away. You saw Ezum's system, right? The last days. Then will I show these tokens. Tokens meaning signs, all right? It says, the book shall be open before the firmament and they shall see all together. What does it mean, the book open before the firmament? It's talking about how the satellites, all right, in the upper atmosphere is broadcasting the uh scriptures okay brothers go live all around the world and you can see it all together at different times of the day because the books are being opened before the firmament the books referring to the scriptures all right and we are seeing it all together a brother can go live right now in germany 
And, you know, his time zone might be different from wherever you might be at. But guess what? You'll see it together, man. All right. Brother, go live in Australia. His time zone different from your time zone. But guess what? You'll see it all together, man. All right. Verse 21. And the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. And then you see that, man. There's a lot of children who are growing up very quickly. You know, it's funny. A lot of people who don't really understand. They'll call the children nowadays. Uh, uh pandemic babies okay because they say you know the, the the children that was born around the time of the c19 or you know in this era that we're in right now during the quote-unquote pandemic you know even though so-called joe biden said it's over with <laughs> but anyways uh I'm being, I'm being funny but anyways the point being you know they say oh yeah these these pandemic babies something's different about them you know they're different but, you know, children, you know, even babies that I know who are only a year old, all right, literally, you know, they're already articulating words, man, okay? You know, they're able to walk, they're able to articulate words, but the Lord, the Lord spake of these things happening from the foundation of the world. This is the prophecy about it. It says, the women with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old, right? There's there's many different cases of people who had premature births. Okay, and they shall live and be raised up. That's right. Matter of fact, I believe one of, one of my siblings that I have was a was a premature baby, man. And they're and they're up, you know, and they're raised up, and they and they're alive, you know, due to the grace and the mercy of Yahweh Shemeshai. Okay, it says, and suddenly. Shall the sown places appear unsown, the full storehouse shall suddenly be found empty. That's right. Meaning these uh these grocery stores, you know, your shopping centers, a lot of these sown places were are, are unsown. Okay? You know, before the C one nine hit and before the pandemic, a lot of these shelves were stocked up. But now, you know, it's it they, they conditioned you to get used to shelves not being fully stocked. OK, and even with the, and even if you want to take it in a sense with the banks too, a lot of these banks was sown with, you know, money. Right. Or other people's money. But all these people starting to do these bank runs, these banks are about to be found empty as well. All right. Verse 23 and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall sudden, they shall be suddenly afraid. All right. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. Right. Friends fighting one against another like enemies, man. The scripture speak about how the love of many shall wax cold, man. All right. The Lord's going to sit every man against his neighbor. You know, in the times we're coming into, it's going to be complete anarchy in the streets. It's going to be like the purge, man. Okay. You know, it was spiritual about the last purge movie. It was based out of Texas. But, um, you know, they, they were saying how Texas wants to basically become its own state or become its own, you know, sovereignty outside of America. And that's going to cause all hell to break loose if it does come to pass. You know. So, hey, you never know. I mean, just like the movie Bushwick, Texas wanted to secede from America and that caused uh, chaos in the streets, man. So, you know, it's yet to be seen what, what, what's going to play out with that situation. But either way, all of America is through. All of Babylon the Great is going to be hit with nuclear missiles, man. Okay? Thus said the Lord. All right? And it says what? The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Yeah, a lot of more utility shortages and utility issues are going to be happening, man. More and more and more. All right, but I got a few clips that I want to play as well through the spirit. I'm going to go ahead and play this one first. Lord willing. Hey, where is my package? Oh, here's your package. Thanks. <laughs> like you're getting a lot of deliveries recently. Because Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very important quick breaking news update. We have just got news 30 minutes ago that another major bank has just collapsed. This is getting absolutely wild, people. Three banks have collapsed in a matter of three days. 
well, what does this mean? This means that the whole banking system is at risk of failing if the US government and the Federal Reserve doesn't step in and step in quickly because panic is spreading. People are doing what I've been talking about uh, for months now. They're running to the banks. They're withdrawing everything. Thing. and these banks are now a huge huge risk of failing because what many people don't know what the federal reserve did uh during 2020 is they made an absolute crazy uh regulation they said banks didn't have to have any reserve requirements at all that's right i'm not sure every joe and jane actually knows that your bank would be lucky to have 10 percent of its cash that uh its depositors have deposit at the bank at one time so again people this is not clickbait this is not doom and gloom this is me trying to warn you that things are hitting the fan right now so let's get into this breaking news right now so look at this everyone regulator closes new york signature bank citing systemic risk and again what do i keep saying everybody look for the signs look for the signs but of course, when I try to give people the signs, they say you're just a fear mongerer. Well, people, we've got many, many signs that there's going to be more banks collapsing this week when the markets open and also when the banks open. Because look what happened this past week. Signature Bank was down uh, 37%. We can also see on Friday it dropped 22%. This was telling us that something big is happening. Maybe their executives uh, were selling like what was happening at Silicon Valley. Look at this. SVB CEO sold 3.6 million stocks days before the bank failure also this uh silicon valley bank employees receive bonuses hours before government takeover so you have to pay attention to what the executive's doing and look what the stock's doing follow the money and you'll find your answer so u.s regulators said sunday shut down new york-based signature bank a second financial institution they shuttered after silicon valley bank collapsed now you want more proof that the contagion is spreading look at this svb uk business to be declared insolvent by the bank of england so these are global banks that's having consequences not just in the u.s but around the world we're also in and what does that what does that allude to Revelation 13 and 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a M-A-R-K in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right, that M-A-R-K is the M-A-R-K of the beast, man. When you go into that Greek word, the word is karagma, all right, which goes back to the sea hip, man. You go back into that, that word. Karagma goes back to the Greek word karax, which means a stake or a palisade, which is the needle device used to inject the C-hip inside you. And that word karax goes back to the Greek word grapho, which is also likened to a what? A graph. And graph means what? Writings. And that's what those C-hips have within it. The writings, the records, the data. Okay? You know, to, to identify you, to keep your social security if they, you know, if they still plan on carrying that out in the nwo which they probably will to keep your uh you know your your banking information your health information all right so on and so forth man and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six High size stigma, 666, man. All right, six uh, stigma, going back to stigmata. All right, which means a mark or a sign. So that that's that sign going to show you that you pledge your allegiance to Esau Edom's beast system. All right, you worship the image of the beast and you took his M-A-R-K. So he said, look, it's not just happening in America, it's happening around the world. Why? Because Esau wants to control the entire world through this one world agenda. And this concept isn't new. It really goes back to the Tower of Babel, but even down to the time of the Greeks. All right. With Antiochus, first Maccabees one, starting at verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. See, and even in these times now, you're going to have a lot of Israelites take that sea hit, man. For sure. 
is <laughs> spiritual. It, it paused on two, three, zero. Two thirds of our people, a good majority of two thirds of our people, are gonna take that seat here, man. And a good and, and two thirds of our people. I was gonna say a good majority, but all of them, two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. Thus said the Lord. But let's get back into the clip. Now seeing a similar systemic risk exemption for Signature Bank New York, which was closed today by its state chartering authority, Treasury Federal Reserve and FDIC said in a joint statement Sunday evening. This is absolutely crazy run. The third bank closing down, the regulators stepping in, they know something big is happening. And you think this is the only regional bank that's going to collapse? No, there's many, many more. What could be next, everyone? Look, First Republic, their stock down 33% this week. Western Alliance, they're down 34% this week. And this is a Massive one. I think this could be the next to go. PacWest Bancorp down 55% last week. Now, do you want more proof that the contagion is spreading? Look at this. So stablecoin USDC breaks dollar peg after firm reveals it had $3.3 billion in SVB exposure. Now, this is a stablecoin, a cryptocurrency stablecoin, which was one of the biggest second owning to Tether with a market cap of around $40 billion. And you can see on this news, it actually broke the dollar, which is never uh, done in history. And it fell all the way down to around 87 cents uh, it has recovered uh pretty much now to 99 cents but it still has not fully recovered and you know even if it does recover this is very very worrying now back to signature bank we need to pay attention to what's happening the banking regulators said the depositors of signature bank will have full access to their deposits all deposits of this institution will be made whole as with the resolution of Silicon Valley Bank, no losses will be borne by the taxpayer, the regulators said. Now, this is an absolute live run. Janet Yellen just announced a new $25 billion uh, facility to backstop these banks. Who do you think is going to pay for it? Also, the Federal Reserve is creating a new facility to backstop these banks that are going under. Well, who do you think is going to pay for that? We're going to pay for it with our purchasing power getting diminished, and that's just going to encourage more and more banks to take more risk and ultimately lead to a bigger collapse. Because if the whole system goes down, it doesn't matter how much money the Federal Reserve prints, people will completely lose faith in the dollar and the banking system, and it'll all go down. Exactly how big is this bank? So Signature is one of the main banks for the cryptocurrency industry. Well, we all know what was going to happen with that. As of December 31st, Signature had $110 billion in total assets and $88 billion in total deposits, according to securities filing. So this is getting big, everyone. When you start to add in all these banks' losses in total, we're getting close to a trillion dollars that potentially be wiped out. To send the damage and starve off a bigger crisis, the Fed and Treasury created an emergency program to backstop deposits at Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank using the Fed's Emergency Lending Authority. Now again, if you're wondering how are these banks collapsing, let me explain it to you in 60 seconds very, very simply, because I want every uh, average Joe and Jane to understand what's going on, because the government will tell you, look, it's too complicated if you understand, you can't possibly understand the banking system. No, it's very, very simple, everyone. What happened in 2020 is banks were flooded with deposits with all this new money being created. Then what you the banks have to do is when you deposit money at the bank, that's actually a liability on their sheet. We may think it's an asset. No, to the banks, that's a liability. So then they have to go buy an interest-bearing asset to pay interest on your deposit. So normally what they'll do is they'll go buy a bond, a mortgage-backed security, a treasury, etc. Well, what we saw during 2021 was the biggest bond market bubble in history. Uh, yields were almost at zero. The 10-year had a, a yield of 0.5%. But then what we saw during 2022 is these bonds collapsed. Bonds prices fell around 40%. So so now when people are trying to withdraw their money, the bank uh, normally can just hold that bond to maturity and not lose anything. But now they're having to sell those bonds at a 40% loss and they're actually not able to get enough money to pay back their depositors when they're wanting to withdraw. Now, there's just only a few withdrawals. It's normally okay. But what we're seeing right now is a full-on banking panic and the banks do not have your money. Now, also another option for the banks, what they would normally do was just uh, sell stock. But nobody has faith in these banks anymore, so nobody wants to buy their stock. So when they do sell it, it's selling for pennies on the dollar, so they also can't get cash that way. So everyone, if I was you, when the bank opens today, run to the bank, withdraw as much money as you can until we wait to see what happens. I think we're going to see more banks are full. This is just a third in one day. This is absolutely crazy. Also, Bank of America, they're the biggest major bank that has the most unrealized losses about 
43% um, of its book value, they have in unrealized losses, about $110 billion. So also, I'd be worried if I was a Bank of America customer as well. And what's going to be very, very critical is if the Federal Reserve keeps on lifting interest rates. So I think they need to because inflation's out of control. But I think we all know they're going to save the banks over the people. So if they don't lift interest rates, inflation's going to get much, much worse. And we're going to have to go to much higher interest rates down the road. And the crisis will just be even bigger. But everyone, what do you think about all of Hey, Colin Bushmel shot. This place finished, man. This place is over with, man. The water y'all by Shmel shot. This place is over with. All right. Lord, again, it's about this place, man. I brought this out. We continue to keep serving the Lord, man. And for all you simple ass niggas who put your trust in money, all right, look at where it's taking you, bro. Ain't going to help you in these last days, man. The only thing that's going to profit you is your how about Shmashah's grace and his mercy and his righteousness being upon you. If not, you through. Sirach Ecclesiastes 5 and 8. Set not thine heart upon goods. Let me go up a little further, right? Sirach Ecclesiastes 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. That's right. Don't wait to turn back to Yahweh Shemashah. Don't wait to repent. Because the wrath of the Lord is going to come suddenly upon you, man. And while you think shit is sweet and your security, while you're comfort, right? While you're comfortable, you're going to perish in the day of vengeance. Verse 8. Set not thine heart upon goods unjustly gotten. For they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. That's why a lot of these dudes are so proud. They made all this money. Now look. All right? Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Proverbs 15 and 6, in the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. And that's what's coming upon this place. Trouble. Get this pre -sub. Proverbs 11 and 4, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death, man. That's what it is. Zephaniah chapter 1, starting at verse 18, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. That's right. And what's the precept to go with that? Ezekiel uh, uh, 7. And 18. They shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. You see? They shall not satisfy their souls, neither their fill their bowls or bowels, Salakia, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. Right. So a lot of these people are going to be cut off, man. Ooh, lead me to this precept right here. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 11. How ye inhabitants of Maktesh. Maktesh was an ancient merchant city. Just like how America is now a merchant city. For all the merchant people are cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. That's right, man. This place is over with. This place is finished. And it's evident. All right. You know, brother sent this in the chat as well. It says U.S. Fed. Okay. Which really the Federal Reserve is, is a private owned company. All right. You know, you had these... uh. You had these individuals go to Jekyll Island and put together the Federal Reserve notes, you know, and one of them was a was a German. OK, and then you had a few other Edomites put put this together and they did this in secrecy, man. All right. And, you know, they, they put the name Federal Reserve to make it sound like, you know, it's it's it's, it's government based, but really it's private owned, man. And, you know, this is what the elites are going to use. This is what the elites have been using to. uh you know, defund America ultimately. Okay. Jake think that they win and they Jake think because they got a stack of federal reserve notes that they're rich, but that money ain't backed up by nothing. It's a fiat currency and you're seeing it diminish right before your very eyes. All you proud niggas who put your trust in money, man, the Wadi Al Bashmel Shai, the Lord is wiping the smirks off your faces, man. All right. It says U.S. Fed announces 25 billion in funding to backstop banks. It says, and then a brother put this, the Federal Reserve is literally buying up the small banks. It's not a bailout, it's a buyout. And that's facts, man. So here goes the article, all right? You can access this article if you want to look it up online. 
Cointelegraph.com. U.S. Fed announces $25 billion in funding to, bank stop, to backstop banks. The Federal Reserve established a funding program for banks making $25 billion available to eligible firms in a bid to avoid further banking liquidity issues. Hot on the heels of several United States bank collapse, the Federal Reserve Board has announced $25 billion worth of funding aimed at backstopping banks and other depository firms. The funds would ensure that eligible banks would have enough liquidity to cover the needs of their customers during times of turmoil. All right. Federal Reserve announces bank term funding program BTFP to support American businesses and households to ensure banks have ability to meet needs of all their depositors. Right. So they're acting like they're coming in to save the day. But like the brother said, it's a buyout, not a bailout. In a March 12th statement, the Federal Reserve Board said it created a $25 billion bank term funding program. And see, this is all happening after the, after the Pasak, man. You see? Lord's getting ready to destroy this place, man. All right? The hope, 2023, the hopeful year of all the prophecies coming to pass, man. Lord willing. Okay? And we see the prophecies coming to pass, man. And they're going to continue to come to pass. All right, since so the Federal Reserve Board said it created a $25 billion bank term funding program, BTFP, offering loans of up to one-year bank to banks, savings, associations, credit unions, and other eligible depository inst institutions. Eligible firms must pledge U.S. Treasuries, agency debt, and mortgage-backed securities or other qualifying assets as collateral, which will be valued at par the price at which the assets were issued. So ultimately, what, what does the scripture say? Let's get the precept. Borrow servant lender proverbs 22 and 7 the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender okay that's right man the borrower is servant to the lender so the bank is saying look you want us to bail you out okay well here's here's the catch all right you got to be eligible and you have to pledge to the u.s treasury all right. Uh, debt agency, debt and mortgage backed securities or other qualifying assets as collateral. Right. So let's just say things go wrong. All right. We're going to take this from you if things don't go right. And, and, the, and the real is and the thing is, this is nothing but Hegelian dialectics. Let's get that real quick. I'm sure I'm spelling it wrong, but uh, Lord willing, you know, the water you my shot. All right. Hegelian dialectic. It says. Salaki, Salaki, Salaki. All right. So basically, Hegelian dialectic is another way of saying order ab KO. You know. Ooh, this is a good one. All right. Hegelian dialectic, the agenda. What's the agenda, right? In this particular instance. The agenda is the centralization of power through a monopoly currency, right? That's what they want to do. So what's the monopoly currency to see here? Okay. The thesis, the Federal Reserve unbacked intangible currency. All right. So the antithesis is gold standard honest money. So the problem is the Federal Reserve is unbacked. It's an intangible currency. The reaction is the gold standard honest money. The solution, quote unquote, is digital gold, fraudulent gold, back digital currency owned by the same guys that caused the problem. OK, order ab KO, man. Hegelian dialectic. All right. This is it's basically another concept of order ab KO. All right. So basically order out of chaos, pressure from above, pressure from below. What Esau is doing. All right. Is he creates the problem. All right. Then he creates the solution or what it is. Esau has an agenda. All right. So he'll create a problem and then he'll bring the solution as if, you know, or the reaction will cause him to bring a solution. All right. Here's a good picture right here. Dad, why do people give up freedom for security? It's called Hegelian dialectic, sweetie. They create a problem. The problem creates a reaction. If there is enough fear and hysteria, people will not only accept the solution that it limits their rights, 
but they will actually beg for it, right? That's it. That's what it is. It's Hegelian dialectics, man. All right? Um, you know, and that's what Esau is all about. Like I said, it's methods of manipulation. That's what Esau is about, manipulation. All right? So they're trying to get a monopoly, man. Also, you got the uh, the Latin term order ab chaos, which means order out of chaos. Esau is trying to bring order through the chaos that he's bringing. All right. So, bracket the Yalba Shemashai. And this is really all the will of the Lord. You know? It says, um, the Fed added it would be an additional source of liquidity against high quality securities, eliminating an institution need to quickly sell those securities in times of stress. Basically, all HQLA bonds. And not only treasuries are eligible, banks can post them to the Fed to raise money and bonds will be valued at par. So all the negative mark, mark to mark market from unhedged bonds is not considered with this facility. What are the terms? Excellent. In my opinion, funding is at one year OIS, basically one year market implied Fed funds plus a mar marriage or slot. Yeah, let me make sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. I want to go into. I'm gonna go into that word. <laughs> meager. Meager. Slacky. Meager. Of something provided or available, lacking in quality or quantity. All right. Lean thin. So it says. Um, meager temp BPS spread on top. One year guaranteed liquidity at Fed funds plus 10 BPS posting collateral deep in the mud, but valued at par. Quite the deal. All right. And this is what it is right here. You know, so it's going to take me to Twitter. I don't feel like going over there right now. But, um, you know, this is what it is. I'll go. I, I'll just go through it, you know, through spirit. Anybody wants to take a screenshot of that? It says Washington, D.C. The following statement was released by the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet L. Yellen, Federal Reserve Board Chairman Jerome H. Powell, and FDIC Chairman Martin J. Gruenberg. Today, we are taking decisive actions to protect the U.S. economy by strengthening public confidence in our banking system. This step will ensure that the U.S. banking system continues to perform its vital roles of protecting deposits and providing access to credit to households and businesses in a manner that promotes strong and sustainable economic growth, which is really just a lie. After receiving a recommendation from the boards of the FDIC and the Federal Reserve and consulting with the president, Secretary Yellen approved actions enabling the FDIC to complete its resolution of Silicon Valley Bank, Santa Clara, California, in a manner that fully protects all depositors. Depositors will have access to all their money starting Monday, March 13th. No losses associated with the resolution of the Silicon Valley Bank will be borne by the taxpayer. We are also announcing a similar system systemic risk exception for Signature Bank New York, New York, which was closed today by a state chartering authority. All depositors of this institution will be made whole as the resolution as with the resolution of Silicon Valley Bank, no loss will be borne by the taxpayer. Shareholders and certain unsecured debt holders will not be protected. Senior management has also been removed. Any loss to the deposit insurance fund to support uninsured depositors will be recovered by a special assessment on banks as required by law. Finally, the Federal Reserve Board on Sunday announced it will make available additional funding to eligible depository institutions to help assure banks have the ability to meet the needs of all the depositors. So here it is. Esau is giving those uh, smooth words and those false promises, man. You know, and even though they might actually do it. All right. You know, the point being is what? It's really for a, a bigger picture for Esau to, to gain even more control. It says to support American business, businesses and households, the Federal Reserve Board on Sunday announced it will make available additional funding to eligible depository institutions to help assure banks have the ability to meet the needs of all their depositors. This action will bolster the capacity of the banking system to safeguard deposits and assure the ongoing provision of money and credit to the economy. The Federal Reserve is prepared to address any liquidity pressures that may arise. The financing will be available through the creation of new bank term funding program of a new bank term funding program, BTFP, 
offering loans up to one year in length to banks, saving associations, credit unions, and other eligible depository institutions pledging U.S. treasuries, agency debt, and mortgage-backed securities and other qualifying assets as collateral. These assets will be valued at par. The BTFP will be an additional source of liquidity against high-quality securities, eliminating an institution needs to need to quickly sell those securities in times of stress. With approval of the Treasury Secretary, the Department of the Treasury will be will make available up to $25 billion from the Exchange Stabilization Fund as a backstop, backstop for the BFT, BTFP. The Federal Reserve does not anticipate that it will be necessary to draw on these backstop funds. After receiving a recommendation from the boards of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, and the Federal Reserve, Treasury Secretary Yellen, after consultation with the President, approved actions to enable FDIC the FDIC to complete its resolution of Silicon Valley Bank in a matter that fully protects all depositors, both insured and uninsured. These actions will reduce stress across the financial system, support financial stability, and minimize any impact on business, household, taxpayers, and the broader economy. You know, so that's the point. All right. And this is the uh, bank term funding program. This is a picture of it. This is what it looks like right here. So everything is lined up through the spirit, man. You know, it's all being lined up through the spirit. It's all being set up. You know, bracket the Yabash Mashai, man. All right, you even had this uh, end time headline. It says the Federal Reserve just made an emergency decision which will fundamentally change banking in America forever. Opinion. Did you think that the Federal Reserve would just stand by and watch the U.S. banking system compl completely collapse? In response to the stunning failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, the Federal Reserve announced a rescue plan on Sunday evening that is going to radically change banking in America forever. All deposits at Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank will be fully guaranteed and will be available on Monday. Of course, the Federal Reserve can't just make an exception for these two banks. If they're going to do this for them, th that means that they're going to have to do it for everyone else, too. So what this means is that from this point forward, the Federal Reserve is essentially promising to guarantee every bank account in America, considering the fact that the more than $19 trillion is deposited with the U.S. banks. That is quite a promise to make. But, you know, Amalek got the money. <laughs> but really, it's deeper than that. What they're trying to do is take control. It says, I want to show you that I am not exaggerating one bit. The following is the announcement. But about about this new plan that was just posted on the official website of the Federal Reserve to support American businesses and households, the Federal Reserve Board on Sunday announced it will make available additional funding to eligible depository institutions to help assure banks have the ability to meet the needs of all their depositors. This action will bolster the capacity of the banking system to safeguard deposits and assure the ongoing provision of money and credit the economy. The Federal Reserve is prepared to address any liquidity pressures that may arise. The additional funding will be made available through the creation of a new bank term funding program, BTFP, offering loans up, up to you uh, to one year in length to banks, savings, associations, credit unions, and other eligible depository institutions, pledging U.S. treasuries, agency, debt, and mortgage-backed securities, and other qualifying assets as collateral. These assets will be valued at par. The BTFP will be additional source of liquidity against any high against high quality securities, limiting an institution's need to quickly sell those securities in times of stress. With the approval of the Treasury Secretary, the Department of the Treasury will make available up to twenty five billion from the exchange stabilization fund as a backstop for the BTFP. The Federal Reserve does not anticipate that it will be necessary to draw on these backstop funds. You know, kind of like what we read earlier. OK. You know, they're basically going into uh, what, what we read earlier. All right. So it says. After receiving a recommendation from the boards of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, the, and the Federal Reserve Treasury Secretary Yellen, after consultation with the president, approved actions to enable the FDIC to complete its resolutions of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in a manner that fully protects all depositors, both insured and uninsured. These actions will reduce stress across the financial system, support financial stability, and minimize any impact on business, household, taxpayers, and the broader economy. See, that's what ESO is promising, right? The board is carefully monitoring developments in the financial 
markets, the capital and liquidity positions of the U.S. bank system are strong and the U.S. financial system is resilient. Depository institutions may obtain liquidity against a wide range of collateral through the discount window, which remains open and available. In addition, the discount window will apply the same margins used for the securities eligible for the BTFP, further increasing lendable value at the window. The board is closely monitoring conditions across the financial system and is prepared to use its full range of tools to support household and businesses and will take additional steps as appropriate. And please don't just skim those paragraphs. Take the time to read them in detail because what the Fed just did literally changes everything. From now on, nobody will have to worry that their bank will fail and the Fed has decided to completely end the war against inflation. If the technical language confuses you, here is zero hedges translation. Translation. The Fed's hiking cycle is dead and buried. And here comes the next round of massive liquidity injections. Also, it also means that the Fed, Treasury, and FDIC have just experienced the most devastating humiliation in recent history. Just four days ago, Powell was telling Congress he could hike 50 BPS. And here we are now using taxpayer funds to bail out banks that have collapsed because they couldn't even handle 4.75%. And somehow the Fed has no idea. That an analysis is right on the money. I warned that our system could not handle higher interest rates and higher rates were directly related to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank so that there won't be any more rate hikes. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Fed started cutting rates very soon. Remember, this is an opinionated uh, article right here, okay? So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but however, you know, ponder on it, okay? Because they never know. It says, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Fed started cutting rates very soon. In addition, all the fresh money that the Fed will be injecting into the financial system now will be highly infl inflationary. We are being told that the Fed's plan won't cost taxpayers a dime, but the truth is that inflation is a tax on all of us. So the financial community may be praising this extraordinary intervention by the Fed, but there will be there will inevitably be a very high price for spraying money around recklessly. Okay, and that's the point. <laughs> It says read more, you know, but we're going to cut a cut on that. If you want to find that article, you can go on Ed Time Headlines and, you know, just type in the headline or the uh, the title of the article. All right. And it was um written by uh, End Time Headlines. I'm not sure which who exactly is the author, but that's the point on that. All right. For the sake of time, we're going to stop that and we're going to go move forward. And we're going to touch on this as well, which we read earlier. It's another little thing that you could check out. We 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 checked that out already. So let's move forward and uh, let's get into this because hey, Esau is setting up his one world agenda system. So here it is. You see, they're trying to start the lab, creative food, because they know that a famine is coming, man. They know that this, the resources are becoming scarce. Why? Because Yahweh Shemashai is judging this place, man. All right. The World Economic Forum. And you had one of the guys who was the top dude in the food industry for the entire planet Earth. You know, he was saying how famine, you know, is expected to come in 2023. So why are they trying to start all this synthetic meat, all this lab grown food? 
because they know a famine is coming, man. And really, the Lord created the earth to be inhabited, but the way that this present earth is set up, it's not, it's not set up for everybody to be able to be sustained because this world is wicked. But in the kingdom to come, there's going to be way more than 9 billion people, all right? You know, the earth is going to be vast, but it's going to be inhabited, all right? You know, when the scriptures say our bread is defiled amongst the Gentiles. Famine is approaching, man. The scriptures speak about how famine is going to come, all right? I'm going to get this one right here. This is a 15-minute city. Uh, Yeah, <笑> 不行,迫不及待了 So what is this breed? A police state Complete control You go against the system all I gotta do is just turn off your C hip. place is finished man and guess what china's not the only place that wants to implement a 15-minute city all right cleveland ohio wants Mayor to implement Justin a 15 minute city. his first state of the city address last night and in his speech he took credit for the launching of new conversations around the waterfront development he said safety remains his top priority and he acknowledged his missteps including the city's poor response to that snowstorm we saw back on mlk day he also introduced a concept to rebuild Cleveland as, quote, a 15-minute city. Sarah Shookman is here to explain what that means. Sarah, good afternoon to you. What exactly does that mean, 15-minute city? Well, Jay, Cleveland says it hopes to be the first city in the U.S. to implement this model, and the idea is pretty simple. Everything you need is within 15 minutes of where you live, either on foot, by bike, or transit. It first took off in Paris. Instead of centralized downtowns where people work and separate places where they live, why shouldn't everything be closer? Well, that reduced proximity is greener, it's more sustainable, and it creates more solidarity between neighbors. But you can't start from scratch, obviously. So it's about repurposing existing spaces. Mayor Bibb said last night it'll be about people first, not developers. Well, city planners today told me they will aim to find out how residents might want to see their community change and make sure that the city's zoning restrictions policies and their policies around development align. And the first step for that is making a list. Things like grocery stores, schools, parks, but also other things like barbershops, cafes, a general list of, of amenities and needs that we think as, as city officials, we, we know and have heard from residents that they want to be able to access, but the goal is for it to be iterative. We want to eventually take this model to communities and have them and tell us what exactly needs uh, or amenities they really see as being valuable that they want access to. And while they are finding some neighborhoods have great access on paper, maybe the quality is lacking due to busted sidewalks or lack of bike lanes or bus stops. And whether it's green space we're talking about or food justice, some neighborhoods are just lacking altogether here in Cleveland. Ultimately, in a 15 minute city, not every 15 minute radius looks the same, but it serves people with opportunities to access the things they want to get to in their day to day lives. Jay, it sounds like a common sense idea but Sarah, so often implementing ideas like this, 
Well, it becomes a massive challenge. Uh, you have to give them points for creativity and ambition, but how realistically does something like this get done? Yeah, that's the question, right? It definitely doesn't happen overnight. It is supposed to be an ongoing process, and the city admits it is at the very beginning of this. But city planners say the timing right now is right with funding from the federal infrastructure bill that was just passed and some other states and federal um, dollars that could become available. And as part of its new citywide plan, there will soon be a process for all of you to weigh in. So we'll keep you up to date as they let us know what that is as well. All right, very good. Sir Shook live from the newsroom. Sarah, thank you. So that goes to show you, man, they they want to implement this worldwide. Why? What's, what's so what's so special about a 15 minute city? Right. It's helping further their control. All right. You even had in the Spider-Man game, uh, which, you know, this is a form of um, predictive programming in the Spider-Man game. There was martial law. All right. In the Spider-Man game, it was like it wasn't necessarily a 15 minute city. But in the Spider-Man game, it had a uh, martial law in the city, you know, and they had the RFID technology in the game. And they had a little thing where you had to go through checkpoints in the city. And they were they were referred to as Sable International. You know, if you have the Spider-Man game for the PS4. All right, let me see. Sable Soldiers, Spider Man. Um, I'm trying to show like maybe a clip where you uh walk through the city. All right, so like yo, I'm not trying to spend all day with this, but um, I'm trying to see if I could find. That one part. Because there was one part. Oh, yeah, they had drones in the game, too. And also in the Spider-Man game, uh, on, like, certain buildings, it had, a, it had um, Illuminati symbolism, like with the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. Um, let me see. You know, here it is right here. You see, like, these gates right here. If you can look at the details in the background, you see the gates, you know. That that was, like, what it was in Spider-Man, man, in the, in the video game. All right, they had certain streets blocked off. You see how they got martial law on the streets. You know, this is a form of predictive programming. Okay, and the scriptures speak about that. The scriptures speak about how there's going to be martial law. All right? So they do that stuff for predictive programming. Um, and look, the Sable logo is a cube, which that cube is really a hexagon. All right. Which is, a, you know, a witchcraft symbolism. All right. Not trying to get too deep into it, but, um, you know, that's the point. OK, that's the point. We, we drop that. Let's go, uh, so these little 15 minute cities, man, this is a uh, breeding martial law. Let me get the scripture. Second Ezra 16, starting at verse 68, it says, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you and they shall take away certain of you. Take you where? Take you into them FEMA camps. Take you into them little 15-minute cities. Just like how, all right, you know what, let me continue. It says, and feed you being with idle with things offered unto idols. Right. Where you're going you're gonna to be idle, I-D-L-E, because you're not going to be able to do much. In the FEMA camp, with things offered unto idols. Right. You're going to try to offer you that sea hip, man. It says, and they that consent to them shall be had in derision and reproach and trodden under foot. So everybody who sell, sells out to Esau, you threw. Esau is going to turn his back on you. Like it says in Sirach, the 13th chapter. Let me get that real quick. Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 13, starting at verse uh, 4. If thou be for his prophet, he will use thee. But if thou have nothing, he will forsake thee. If thou have anything, he will live with thee. Yea, he will make thee bare and will not be sorry for it. Verse 6, if he have need of thee, he will deceive thee and smile upon thee and put thee in hope. 
he will speak thee fair and say, What wantest thou? And he will shame thee by his meats until he have drawn thee dry thrice, twice or thrice. And at the last he will laugh thee to scorn. Afterward, when he seeth thee, he will forsake thee and shake his head at thee. You see? So Esau is going to just toss people to the curb in that day, man. Once they sell out, he ain't going to have no respect for them. Okay, it says, uh, verse 70. Or I'm reading 69 again. It says, And they that consent to them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. So Esau is getting ready to roll upon all of Israel, man. Especially the elect. Verse 71. They shall be like madmen sparing none. Let me get this real quick through the spirit. Revelation chapter 12. Starting at verse uh, 17, and the dragon was wroth with the woman, the woman referring to Israel, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, referring to the elect, which keep the commandments of Yahweh by Shemashai and have the testimony of Yahweh Shemashiach. And Esau is at war with the elect. But like Yahweh said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, man. Esau, you're not going to be able to stop what's coming to you. Even if you might put some of the men of the Lord or the elect to death, you're not going to be able to stop what's coming to you. Your kingdom's still going to be destroyed. Israel is still going to arise and rule. Over the earth, under our Lord Yahweh Bashmel Shai, every man in his own rightful order. Okay, it says, uh, verse seventy-two: For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Right, and in the clip that we're going to get into, through the Spirit, is going to get into that. It's going to show you that. According to the World Economic Forum website, as of May 2023, 36 countries worldwide will have smart city governance initiatives. Surveillance monitoring analysis reporting technology. You'll have a digital ID that will track in real time your shopping, your entertainment, your activities, and your carbon footprint. And you'll also have a 15-minute travel limit without a permit. A permit to travel. And if you exceed any of these things, you'll be denied access to daily activities. Obviously, no one would move into one of these cities voluntarily, but they don't have to because the laws governing agenda 2030 land development allows the government to cease polluted land and move their residents to these smart cities. If you're living somewhere where your land and water is poisoned, you don't get an option to opt out. Hmm, where has land and water been poisoned recently? Right. And not just in Ohio, there's been other places that have been having, you know, train derailments and, you know, things getting poisoned. Also in Hawaii, they got a uh, they got a, a situation with the fuel because they were storing the uh, I believe it was either the jet fuel or the um, the fuel for the ships underground. And that that fuel got mixed in with the water pipes. So now that water in Hawaii as well in a specific area in Hawaii is contaminated, man. All right, and if you live by Pearl Harbor, you know, that uh, water is contaminated, too. The people can't even fish there, you know? So, hey, it just goes to show you what's going on. Why do you think they're trying to create these 15-minute cities, man? They want martial law, man. This is what's going to happen according to the scriptures. This is all biblical prophecy. All biblical prophecy. Second Ezra 16 and verse 72 for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in the fire. Right. Why? Because you're going to know who's the elect in that day. Because the Lord is going to make divine intervention happen for them. But the elect are going to go through the fire too. All right. It says here, O ye, my beloved, say the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. Salakio. It says... Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. All right. Bear with me. So we're not going to have to worry. Lord, will we be a part of the like number? We're not going to have to worry when, when these things come to pass. Because Yahweh Bashmashai is going to guide us and keep us, man. Okay. It says... Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashmel Shai is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, power, let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. That's right. So we got to 
keep continually to follow the Lord. All right. He's going to keep continually to guide us, man. You know, we have nothing to worry about as long as we're doing right by Yahweh Shemashah. Even if that means where we got to give up our lives. We dead in this place anyways, man. We're not losing anything. We're gaining things, to be honest. You know, so just wanted to get into that through the spirit. Um, I brought Zaz Lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shemashah, Bashem HaKadash. Double honesty, apostle, is great, most of the well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball.